vanquished the hurdles of filtering surgery with gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabeculotomy glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible blindness worldwide trabeculectomy has been the mainstay of glaucoma management for decades despite improvements and innovations trabeculectomy still comes with a heavy cost of complications though we expect and wish every surgical outcome with low diffuse blep and smiling face of the patient unfortunately we have to face several complications ranging from shallow anterior chamber blep bleed blebitis hypertony and choroidal detachment increasing patient quality of life and decreasing the rates of post operative complications have been the driving forces behind the development of conjunctiva sparing minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries various mijs techniques have been described since 2000s among those the gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabeculotomy was first introduced in 2014 by grover et al gat attempts to disarm the resistance from the trabecular meshwork and restore a more natural outflow of aqueous fluid within the eye though it is technically demanding it provides a very cost effective mijs procedure when a polypropylene suture is used let's look at some complex case scenarios so here is the case of 25 year old female who was diagnosed with juvenile open angle glaucoma in both eyes with advanced cupping and uncontrolled intraocular pressure despite maximal medical therapy this is the fundus picture showing advanced cupping in both eyes with advanced field defect in both eyes and early field defect in left eye and oct corroborating with the above findings the patient underwent right eye combined trabeculotomy with trabeculectomy after 2 weeks of surgery the intraocular pressure was 6 mm mercury but at 2 months post operative period the intraocular pressure dropped to 4 mm mercury with the patient developing hypotony maculopathy at 3 months post op the intraocular pressure remained low at 3 mm mercury with persisting hypotony maculopathy This is the OCT picture showing hypertony maculopathy in the patient. So what to do next in the left eye? For the left eye, the patient was planned for gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabeculotomy considering the high intraocular pressure and the complication in the right eye. After putting adequate viscoelastic and docking the gonio lens, a goniotomy was made. and the schlems canal was exposed then the blunted proline tip is introduced into the schlems canal and threaded slowly along the schlems canal 360 degree in small strokes the proline suture is pushed gently when the tip appears on the other side it is gently grabbed using the max grip forceps and the 360 degree gat is completed postoperatively the patient's intraocular pressure was under good control and thereby avoiding complication as well Next is a 60 year old female patient who was a known case of primary open angle glaucoma and was on maximal medical therapy. This patient had advanced glaucoma and uncontrolled intraocular pressure. The field report showing the uncontrolled nature of the glaucoma and the advanced field defect almost approaching fixation. This patient underwent gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabeculotomy with phacoemulsification in the right eye and the intraocular pressure control was really good in this patient this is a video showing the gat procedure being performed in the right eye of the patient The patient had good control of intraocular pressure in both the eyes. In angle closure glaucoma, phacoemulsification with gonioscyanoculysis has failed to achieve a satisfying intraocular pressure level because of dysfunctional trabecular meshwork. 
In such cases, combined phaco emulsification along with goniocyanicolysis and GAT are found to achieve target IOPs. So this is the patient who is a 52-year-old female patient who is a known case of angle closure glaucoma and advanced cupping in both eyes with uncontrolled intraocular pressure. This patient underwent young peripheral iridotomy after controlling the intraocular pressure. The patient was started on maximal medical therapy and after adequate control of intraocular pressure, the patient was planned for goniocyanicolysis with gonioscopy assisted transluminal trabeculotomy along with phaco emulsification. The goniocyanicolysis was achieved using a tenito microhook. The tenito microhook is introduced through the paracentesis and gentle goniocyanicolysis is being performed. After achieving the goniocyanicolysis, the blunted proline tip is introduced and goniotomy is done. The Schlem's canal is exposed in the nasal quadrant and the proline suture is threaded and the procedure is performed. The same patient underwent GAT with phaco emulsification within a gap of two weeks. The microscope tilt and the patient positioning is one of the key factors for a successful GAT. Postoperatively, the intraocular pressure was well controlled in both eyes without any complication in the patient. The most common complication following a GAT procedure are high femur and transient intraocular pressure spikes. The high femur occurs when Schlem's canal is filled with blood due to the reflex from the episcleral veins after the circumferential rupture of the trabecular meshwork. The transient IOP spikes are related to prolonged high femur and can be eliminated by washing out the anterior chamber. For a successful GAT, the practice of intraoperative gonioscopy with direct gonio lens in phaco procedure should be started first. The microscope rotation to 35 degree towards the surgeon and patient's head 35 degree away from the surgeon for an end fast view of the trabecular meshwork. Keep the anterior chamber formed at all the times using good viscoelastic. The proline end of the suture should be blunted with cautery and avoid any air bubble between the lens and the cornea. To conclude, GAT is a safe procedure which can be considered in varying spectrum of glaucomas due to its high safety profile and intraocular pressure low in efficacy.